Hello, and in this video, we're going to use Onshape to create the trammel base uh, for PLTW. Uh, this is from uh, 1.3.2, I believe. Uh, it's The trammel base is essentially two wooden pieces uh, glued or taped together, uh, and we're going to make it as if it's just one solid piece here. Uh, so we're going to start by making this top and putting those cutouts on the top, and then we'll go back and add in the bottom. Uh, so we'll do top first, top half first, and then go back and do the second half at the end. Uh, so to do this, first we're going to start with on shape. We're going to start a sketch and make the overall rectangle. Uh, we also have this drawing page to help us with some of the dimensions on that. Uh, so the overall rectangle we can see is 4.25 by 4.25. Uh, so we're going to come back to on shape. I already started my project. I named it Trammel Base, and I'm going to start a sketch. And I'm just going to go on the top and turn to my top view. Uh, then we need a rectangle. Uh, I'm just going to do a corner rectangle, and then I'll recenter my view. So I'm going to click and type 4.25, enter, 4.25, enter. And then I'll click top to recenter my view so we can kind of see it a little bit better. Uh, so that gives me my overall dimension, my overall shape. I'll move this 4.25 out wall way, and I'll move uh, this guy way out wall way too. Uh, so next, we want to look and see what we have going on. So we have four holes on the upper left-hand side. Uh, so we're going to start with the upper left-hand hole. Uh, so if we go back and we look at our previous assignment, we can see uh, that it's a circle. If we get down to it, it's a circle. And we're going to go to a uh, couple places after that. We'll go to three places after decimal. Uh, so we'll be at point 0.2, and then if we look closely, it rounds up to 3.0. So point 0.230 for this one. Uh, for our diameter on the circle, so I'm just going to start by creating a circle and put it as point 0.230. Uh, that circle I need to locate. Uh, to do that, I'm going to look back at my drawing page, and you can see there's a construction line. And that construction line is a distance of 0 0.406 in, it looks like. So 0 0.406 is going to be our location. So I'm going to start with a line, hit construction, and I'm going to start from the top and just make sure it's going perpendicularly down. Uh, then I'm going to hit dimension, and dimension from my construction line to my object line as 0 0.406. Enter. Uh, then I'm going to use the coincident constraint and hit my uh, circle and put it on that line, the center of my circle and put it on that line. Uh, so that gives me that vertical component. Now I need that horizontal component. So uh, I need that to get that from my drawing page. So I come back to my drawing page. I have the 4.06. Now I need to see how far it is from the bottom. Uh, all the measurements are a baseline from the bottom. So it's if we look, it's 3.875. So again, I'll do a construction line. So I'll grab a line, hit construction, and again, I'll just go straight over, make sure it's perpendicular, and I'll hit escape and dimension it. So from this line all the way down to the base, I'm going to pull it over close to that 3.25, and I'm going to set it again as my value of 3.875. So 3.875. Enter. Again, we need a, a coincident. So I'm going to coincident. I'm going to hit my center of my circle and this line up here. And you can see it fully constrains that circle in its location. Uh, then we'll do the same thing for our next one. We're going to do on the right-hand side of that circle. So if we look at our uh, slides from uh, that previous assignment, we can see it's got another circle. Again, it's point. It's not to the 2, so point 0.17, and it looks like it's 1. Point 0.171 is our circle. So I'm, again, just going to hit circle. I'm just going to make it in a location here, 0.171, and then we'll locate it using construction lines again. Uh, so again, I need a line. I want it to be a construction line, and I'm going to go down from the top. I want it perpendicularly. I'll go about the same distance as my last one. doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, then we'll look back over, and we can see from the outside to this line, it's going to be 0.406. And then another 1.25. Since we haven't made that rectangle yet, uh, we're just going to add those up in on shape. So that's another tool you can use in on shape. You can just dimension between those two. And we can pull it up. 
and we can do that 0 0.406 and then we can just type in plus 1.25 and it does the math for us. Uh, so we end up 1.656 in. Uh, now we have to move our circle by doing a coincident. So I'm just going to go from my center of my circle to that point where those lines intersect. Uh, so on that, it's just going to go on one line and then center the circle to another line. And that puts me in that exact location I need to be. Uh, then we need to do our next circle. So I'm going to, again, move down to the next top up mid. Uh, so we look at that circle, and it's the same measurement as the last one, so 1 0.7, so 0 0.171. So again, I can copy that circle, or I can make a new one, and click and type in my value of 0 0.171, and enter. I yet again need a construction line, so I'm going to hit my line, and then construction, and go from the outer edge across both those lines. Where you end it doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, then we have to dimension. So I hit dimension. I go from my line to the bottom. I'm going to pull it over by this 3.875 and we'll go over and see it should be 2.75 PSOs. So we'll go back and type in 2.75 and enter. Now we can do our coincident constraint and we can click the circle in the line and then the circle in our other line and that locates that one. Uh, then we want our last hole in this segment is going to be the top up mid right. Uh, it's the circle, and we can see it's just sort of two. Uh, so it's 0.1, and then it looks to be 82. So 0.182. Uh, so we'll make that circle, and we we'll click it and type in 0.182. Enter. Uh, this time we already have all our lines, so I'm just going to hit my coincident constraint. Click on the circle, center of the circle, and the line. Uh, I'll click it again. Click on the center of the circle in my line, and then center my circle in the other line. Uh, so I have all those holes located in the right location. Uh, next, I'll go over and do the rectangle. Uh, I will go down to, based on what we have in our slides. We'll go down to this blind hole. Uh, so we'll hit that blind hole next. Uh, we can see. It's just uh, short of 2, uh, it's just under 2, so it's 0.1, and if we round it, it looks like 99, so 0.199 of that circle. So I'm going to make it roughly in the right location, and then we'll dimension it to locate it. So 0.199 is our size, uh, and then we have to look back at our diagram to locate it. Uh, you can see it's 0.2875 from the bottom to the center of the circle, so we'll do that dimension next. Uh, so we'll hit dimension, hit the center of our circle in the bottom, and we'll pull out this side, and then 0.2875 is, I believe, what it was. Yep, 2 point, and we'll hit enter to locate it. Uh, then we have to do the same thing uh, to the side. So if we look to get that location from the side, uh, we have to locate it, and it doesn't give us an exact measurement, so we'll have to look back at our PowerPoint to get that measurement. So if we look over at that top right location, we can see from the outer edge of the circle to the outer edge, uh, it's going to be about 0.762, uh, so we'll dimension that, hit our dimension tool, hit the circle, hit that line, and we'll set that as 0.762, and that should locate that blind circle for us. Uh, next, we'll come down to that lower segment, and I'll start just by adding my construction line. So I'll do construction line. I'll do two that go out horizontally. I'll hit escape after each one, uh, so I can reset and make another one out horizontally, and then hit escape again, and then do two vertically. Uh, so again, select line, construction, and then make sure it's vertical when I go up. I'll hit escape, hit line, hit construction, start on my base, and go straight up. Make sure I have my vertical sign, and then click. Uh, then I want to dimension these lines, so I'm going to zoom out a little, or move down a little bit so you can see it more clearly. And we'll just click back and forth between our pixels. Uh, so you can see the horizontally 2.75 for the first one. So I hit dimension, go from my line over and get 2.75. And then do the same thing on my second line, line over, 
and we click and we look back and we can see that one's going to be point three point eight seven five so three point eight seven five and enter uh then we want to look over at our horizontal or our heights on those uh so we'll go back again and we can see the first one is point three seven five so we'll go from here down and get point three seven five uh, in this case, it looks like I got the wrong click, so I'm going to undo that and would dimension that again. So the bottom line down, and we get 0.375 and enter. Uh, then on the last line, we're going to have a distance of 1.5, it looks like. So I go from this line all the way down, and we get 1.5 and enter. Uh, now it's just a matter of adding in my circles, uh, so I'm just going to continue through, and we can see the mid, lower mid left, it should be 0 0.2, uh, it looks like 2, 5, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, yep, two point, point two two five. so we'll come back, we'll get a circle, again we'll make our circle 0.225, and then we'll do a coincident. Straight. So I'm going to do coincident on one line, uh, hit escape, make sure you get the center of your circle when you do that, so coincident, center my circle to the line, and then center my circle to the other line. Uh, then I'm going to do another circle, and I'm going to start it coincident already, I'm going to click, and then we'll look over it and we'll see that the value for this one uh, should be, it looks like 0 0.170, so we're going to go back and type in. 0.170. Uh, then we'll make our next circle at the coincident location. We'll click uh, this one. If we look, it should be the same value if I remember correctly, and it shows the same as the lower mid right. So this one also is going to be 0.170. Uh, then we do our final circle down here, and we'll scroll down so we can see what that value is, and it shows it should be uh, 0.1. And it's just so a 9, it looks like 8, 8. So 0.188. So we'll click on that coincident location, click to make it, and then type in 0.188. And that gives us our circle. Uh, lastly, we need those two uh, rectangles. So I'm going to hit the rectangle tool, and we'll look back at our diagram. Uh, first one, it says 0.125 by 0.125. So we'll make that down here. And I'm just going to click to make it and type in 1.25 enter, 1.25 enter. Uh, then we'll dimension, and we can see from the bottom to the edge, and we'll set that value as 0 0.406, 0 0.406, and then from that distance in, I believe it's the same 0 0.406, and it is. So we go over and in, and set that as 0 0.406. Uh, finally, we need that rectangle up here at the top. So we we'll create that. Uh, it comes in. If we look back at our diagram, we can see it comes in a distance of. If we look back at our depth, uh, not this one yet. If we look at the cut in length, we can see it's a distance of 1.743. So we're going to type in 1.743 for that distance. So distance from the outer edge in. I'm going to zoom out so we can type. And it's 1.7473. Enter. Then next we'll get the uh, distance from the edge. So I'm going to dimension from this line all the way down. And we get distance of 3.25. And enter. Uh, then next we have a distance from line to line of 1 half or 0.50. Uh, Everything is fully constrained in this diagram, so I'm going to hit my green check to accept. Uh, and then we just need to extrude. So I'm going to extrude. I'm going to click inside my large object, and we want to set our thickness of this object. So I'm going to look at my depth measurement, and you can see this upper portion is about 0 0.240. So we're going to type that in for our extrusion distance, 0 0.240. Uh, so that finishes the top portion, uh, and our next video we'll look at mm -hmm. making the bottom portion. Hopefully this helps you a little bit. Good luck.